Now let's look at a problem where we're going to use test for divisibility. Which one of the following statements is true? In our first part, we have part A. This is red. 8 divides 48,324. To determine whether 8 divides a number, we can look at the last three digits of the number. If 8 divides those last three digits, then it will divide the entire number. So when we take 324 and divide by 8, we'll see that 8 divides 32 four times. But when we subtract, we end up with 4, and this is not going to go in evenly. So therefore, this would be an incorrect statement. Let's try the second one, part B. 6 divides 48,324. What we're going to use to test for divisibility is if it's divisible by 6, then it should also be divisible by 2 and by 3. Now, to determine if a number is divisible by 2, we simply look at the last digit. If that last digit is even, then it is divisible by 2. So because we have an even number, we know that this part does work. It is divisible by 2. Is it divisible by 3? Well, to determine that, we take the sum of the digits in the number. We're going to take 4 plus 8 plus 3 plus 2 plus 4. Let's add those together. We end up with 12 plus 3 is 15 plus 2 is 17 plus 4 is 21. So we end up with a value of 21. Now what we do with that number is try to decide whether 3 divides 21. Since it does, we conclude that the entire number, 48,324, is divisible by 3. Because this number is divisible both by 2 and by 3, which are factors of 6 that have no common factor between them, we can conclude that yes, the number is divisible by 6. Finally, let's look at our last statement. 4 divides 48,324. Well, when you're looking at divisibility by 4, you look at the last two digits of a number. If 4 divides the last two digits, then it divides the entire number. Since 24 is divisible by 4, with no remainder, we can then conclude that 4 does divide 48,324. So this is also a true statement. Now we're going to deal with a problem on prime factorization. Find the prime factorization of 120. This requires us to come up with all of the factors of 120 written as prime numbers. And we're going to use for this a factor tree. And the process is as follows. We start with our number 120, and we just think about two factors of 120. For instance, what I notice is that 120 is 12 times 10. I'm going to write them down. Now, 12 is not a prime number, so I'm now going to continue with its factors. And what comes to mind is I note that 12 is equivalent to 4 times 3. I do the same thing with 10. 10, I know, is equivalent to 2 times 5. Now, 4 is still not a prime number, so I'm going to write it down as its prime factors, 2 times 2. And then the other ones we could bring down or just look at what we have above. And we're going to now notice that we have all prime factors listed. We're going to rewrite this in ascending order where we use exponential notation. So we're going to have 2 times 2 times 2, which can be written as 2 cubed, times our 3 times our 5. And that's the prime factorization of 120. Now let's look at a problem dealing with the greatest common divisor and least common multiple. Find the greatest common divisor and the least common multiple of 48 and 72. We'll begin with the prime factorization of 48. We'll use a factor tree. Notice that 48 is equal to 6 times 8. 6 can be factored further, 2 times 3. 8 can be factored as 2 times 4. And then we'll bring down the 2, and our 4 is 2 times 2. Now we can write the prime factorization of 48 as 2 to the 4th power times 3. Next, let's move to 72. 72 is equal to 8 times 9. 8 can be factored 
as 2 times 4, and then bring the 2 down, we have 4 as 2 times 2, and 9 we can see is factorable as 3 times 3, and so 72 can be rewritten as 2 cubed times 3 squared. Now, to find the greatest common divisor, we're looking for a number which will be a divisor of both numbers and the greatest number that fits that description. We look at the factors of 48 and see 2 to the fourth power. We notice that in 72 we have 2 to the third power. The greatest power of 2 that ends up being a divisor of both is the third power. So we're going to pick up 2 cubed as part of our greatest common divisor. When we look at 48, we see 3 to the first power. We look at 72, we see 3 squared. The greatest power of 3 that is a factor of both would be 3 to the first. So we'll multiply times 3 to the first. Now we evaluate. 2 cubed is 8, multiplied times 3 is going to be 24. And our greatest common divisor is going to be 24 for the two numbers. To find the least common multiple, we have to have this number being a multiple of each one. That means that when we look at the 48 and we see that we have 2 to the 4th as part of its factorization, and then we look at the 72 and we see we have 2 cubed as part of its factorization, we're going to need to have all the four powers of 2 in order to be a multiple of 48. So we'll put down 2 to the 4th power. That will take care of these three powers that we are having to have as necessary to be a multiple of 72. Likewise, when we look at the 3, we have 3 to the first power for 48 and 3 squared for 72. We're going to pick up the 3 squared in order to ensure that it's a multiple of 72. And now we're looking at 2 to the fourth power, which is 16, multiplied times 3 squared, which is 9. 16 times 9 is 144, and that gives us our least common multiple. Now let's consider the following word problem. A choral director needs to divide 192 men and 288 women into all male and all female singing groups so that each group has the same number of people. What is the largest number of people that can be placed in each singing group? Well, notice that we're looking at division, so we're looking for divisors. We want that divisor to be common, so we have the same number of people in each group. And we want the largest such number which will work. So that means we're looking for our greatest common divisor. We're going to find that value by looking at the prime factorizations for our two numbers. Let's begin with 192. We notice that we can divide this by 4. That would be 4 times 48. We can take our value of 4 and break it down into 2 times 2. 48 is equal to 6 times 8. 6 can be broken down further into 2 times 3. 8 can be broken down into 2 times 4. And then finally, we have another 2 times 2. So if we look at all the numbers that we came up with at the tail end here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 powers of 2. So that would be 192 equals 2 to the 6th power. Multiplied times, and we notice that we have a factor of 3. So that's going to be our other factor is part of our factorization. Now let's look at 288. 288 can be broken down into 2 times 144. We'll circle this 2 to remember we have it there. 144 is 12 times 12. We can take our value of 12 and break it into 4 times 3 in each case. And then the 4's can be broken into 2 times 2. Now we notice that we have 288 equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 powers of 2, so that would be 2 to the 5th power, and then 3 squared. Now we're looking for, remember, the greatest common divisor. To find that, it has to be a divisor of each number individually. We're going to look at the fact that we have 2 to the 6th power for 192, 2 to the 5th power for 288. We'll take the smaller of those two exponent powers to come up with our GCD. We see a 3 in 192 as a factor, 3 squared 
as a factor of 288. We'll pick the smaller of those two exponent powers, which would be 3 to the first power, as part of our GCD. That's going to equal 32 times 3, and that product is 96. So therefore, the largest number of people that can be placed in each singing group would be 96. Now we're going to look at a problem dealing with least common multiple. Find the least common multiple of 18 and 30. The least common multiple means we need to look at multiples of each of these numbers. We want to find one that's common to both, and we want the smallest such number that fits that description. We're going to do this process using prime factorization. So we're going to start with our number 18. We note that 18 is equivalent to 2 times 9. 2 is a prime number. 9 can be divided further into 3 times 3. So we can rewrite 18 as 2 times 3 squared. Let's do the same thing for 30. We know that 30 is equal to 6 times 5. 6 can be factored further into 2 times 3. So we have our prime factors, and 30 then equals 2 times 3 times 5. Now, to be a multiple of 18 means that it has to include all the factors of 18, and then it could be multiplied times another natural number. To be a multiple of 30 means it has to include all of the factors of 30, and then perhaps be multiplied by another number. So, to be a least common multiple of the two numbers together, we're going to have to include any of the factors that we see that are appearing, but we don't want to include for instance, we don't have to include the 2 that appears in both more than one time. So we're going to include the factor of 2. We move on, we see a 3 squared for 18 and a 3 for the 30. We'll need to have the two powers of 3 in order to give us a multiple of 18. Since we have two powers of 3, that takes care of the 3 that is required as a factor to be a multiple of 30. Now, 5 is not a common factor, but in order to be a multiple of 30, we have to have the factor of 5, so we'll have to include it. We now notice that we can multiply these together. 2 times 5 would be 10, 3 squared is 9, and our least common multiple is 90. Now let's consider the following word problem. A movie theater runs two documentary films continuously. One documentary runs for 40 minutes, and a second documentary runs for 60 minutes. Both movies begin at 3 p.m. When will the movies begin again at the same time? Well, what we're looking for is the fact that we have a starting point, and then we have a 40-minute film and another 60-minute film. If we can find the least common multiple of 40 and 60, we'll find out when those films will begin again at the same time. So let's start with our prime factorization of 40. We note that 40 is 4 times 10. That will be 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Prime factorization of 40 is 2 cubed times 5. 60 is going to be 6 times 10. 6 is 2 times 3, 10 is 2 times 5, so 60 equals 2 squared times 3 times 5. The least common multiple will be found by picking up all of the factors that appear, and we want to make sure we, we're going to pick up the smallest number of powers that are possible in order to still give us a multiple of each number. So, for instance, we compare. We see 2 cubed as a factor of 40, 2 squared as a factor of 60. We have to pick up the greatest exponent power in order to make sure we get a multiple of 40. That is 2 cubed. We notice that 60 has a factor of 3. Now, that does not appear in 40, but in order to be a multiple of 60, we're going to have to have that factor of 3 included. We notice that 5 is a factor in both numbers, so we'll include that in our result. Now we're going to have 8 times 3 times 5. And we can rearrange a little bit in order to do this mentally. We can write this as 4 times 3 times 2 times 5. Do you see what I did? I took the 8 and wrote it as 4 times 2. 
and then regroup. This is 10, this is 12, so this is going to be 120. Now, let's go back to the word problem. What we were being asked to do was to figure out when the two movies would begin again at the same time. They started at 3 p.m. What this information tells us is that 120 minutes later, or two hours later, they will begin again at the same time. Well, two hours after 3 p.m. would be at 5 p.m. And so this will be the result of the problem.